So we sit here focused on the breath, mindful of the breath, alert. We want to make sure it's not just mindful and alert for a few breaths and then we're off someplace else. We want to be mindful and alert for the whole hour. And then at the end of the hour, when you get up, you want to maintain that mindfulness and alertness as long as you're awake. That requires ardency, the willingness to give energy to the practice with the confidence that if you do it in the proper way, in the skillful way, and that's what ardency is all about. It's not just plain old effort, it's skillful effort. If you're skillful in your effort, then you get energy back. But you have to be willing to make the investment first. And that often means going through periods when the effort is not skillful. And wondering if it's ever going to get right. This is where your determination sees you through. In fact, all of the qualities that are called perfections come into play here. The practice is not simply a matter of technique. It requires developing your heart as well as your mind. We think of the heart and mind as two separate things, but in almost all the languages where Buddhism has been, the words for heart and mind tend to, tend to get blurred. Chitta in Pali is used in some cases where it means mind and in some cases where it means heart. So you're not just training your mind here, you're training your heart as well. And so it's not just a matter of techniques, but it's a matter of strengthening the elements that allow you to give yourself to the practice in a wholehearted way. in the hopes that the heart and the mind will both benefit. This is what the teachings about the perfections are all about. It focuses on the qualities of the heart and mind that you need to bring to the practice and are going to get developed in the practice. And they're an excellent way of looking at the practice as a lifetime process. Not something you do simply when you're on retreat. But they're a way of enabling you to ask, answer the question, what are you going to do with your life? What do you want out of your life? When you look back on your life, as your life is approaching its end, what do you want to look back on? And what do you want to have as a result of having lived this life? If you focus your attention simply on pleasures, well, you wouldn't have anything at that point. It would just be the memories of the pleasures, which may or may not be a pleasant memory. Or you may decide that you want to accomplish something in the world. But that's a pretty risky business, because the world has its ups and downs, its pendulum swings, and you never know when the efforts you make might be just at the end of the pendulum swing and it's going to turn around and come back and just wipe out what you've done. I remember listening to a lawyer one time who had worked his way up into the government, and he'd argued a lot of civil rights cases back in the era when the court was liberal, 
And then he lived long enough to see the pendulum swing and see things started getting conservative again, and he saw a lot of the things he'd worked for just wiped out. And some of you have probably heard the story at the time I went with my father back to visit our home in Charlottesville. It was a house that we'd built. Worked with the architect, got the design we wanted. And even though we hired some builders, Dad did a lot of the carpentry work. And we as a family did the painting, all the things we could do to help save save money in building the house. So one day, some thirty years after the fact, I went with my father and my older brother to visit the town. And we swung by the house, and the people who own the house now weren't taking proper care of it. The roof was beginning to rot through at some spots. And so as we drove back, dropped my brother off, and then it was just my dad and me. As he drove back, and he said, you know, I have nothing to show for my life. I went through all the times he'd been a farmer and spent all that time and energy growing his crop and then being paid money by the government to destroy the crop. And then we got a job with the government and worked hard to make proposals that Congress just pork barreled beyond recognition. And then finally a president came in and wiped out the department he was working for. It made me realize that if you look for your accomplishments in the world outside, they can easily get erased. So if we're not here just for our own personal pleasures or to leave a mark in the world, what are we here for? Well, the teaching on the perfections points you to the mind. You want to be here to develop qualities of mind. You may not want to be here, but here you are. And what are you going to do about it? What are you going to get out of this? Because there's a lot of suffering involved in being a human being. And this is one of the better planes of existence. So what we have to show? If you've worked on qualities of the mind, those carry over. Those are an accomplishment that it's entirely within your power. So that's what we're working on here. It's good to keep that perspective in mind. The qualities may not grow as quickly as we'd like, but that's what the quality of patience is about to learn how to stick with something, even through frustration, even through difficulty. And you may find yourself getting distracted with other ideas of what might be more pleasant. That's what the quality of determination and truthfulness is all about. In fact, determination seems to underlie all the perfections. You make up your mind that you want to accomplish something, and then you stick with it. And then truthfulness, which doesn't mean just telling the truth, but it means once you've made up your mind, you really stick with what you've decided to do. You're true to yourself. You're not a traitor to yourself. That's what will see you through. And it's going to involve some renunciation, because there are lots of possible pleasures in this life. And if you try to get all of them, you go crazy. Once a year I head up to the Bay Area, where the human potential movement was, still has its traces. There's a strong sense that if you strive for excellence in all areas of your life, that's when you develop your full potential as a human being. physically strong and healthy, mentally sharp, socially enlightened, sexually active, spiritually advanced. The idea being that you should strive for excellence in all of these areas. And people really stop to think that excellence in one area might actually cancel out excellence in another. 
in the back of their minds. There's always a thought, well, if I'm not happy, it's because I'm not trying hard enough. And that's crazy making. You've got to focus on what's really worthwhile in life, which means resisting a lot of the currents in our culture. Because our culture seems to be all about distraction. Or as someone once put it, discursive noise. You're the one who has to focus your, your mind. You're the one who has to decide in your goals and to realize that some things you've got to give up in order to attain those goals. I've told you the story about the Chinese woman teaching her stepdaughter while they were playing chess. If you want to be happy in life, you have to decide there's one thing that you want more than anything else. And you have to be willing to sacrifice everything else for that one thing. And it was one of those lessons, of course, that the daughter didn't want to hear. What she did notice, though, was that her stepmother was losing chess pieces all over the board. So she decided, well, here's my chance to beat my stepmother in chess. And so she got more aggressive. Well, it turned out it was a trap. The stepmother had been sacrificing different pieces to lure the girl in. And then she checkmated her. Because the way she played chess, the way the stepmother played chess, was an illustration of the principle. If you're willing to sacrifice some pawns and knights and other pieces here and there, you can win. That's how we have to live our lives. Realize that we can't have keep all our pawns and win at the same time. We have to make our choices. There are a lot of either ors in life. We prefer the both and. And sometimes it's not just both and, it's the both and 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 and. But if you really want to have something to show for your life, you've got to decide there are important qualities in the mind that have to take top priority. That's one of the possible meanings of the word bardami, which is usually translated as perfection. It's one of those words that nobody's really sure why it was chosen. And it doesn't appear in any of the Buddhist teachings. It was a later development in the tradition. But one of the possible meanings is it's related to bharama, which means to be foremost. In other words, you want to be foremost in two ways. One is really excellent in these particular qualities of mind. And secondly, you want to give them top priority in your life. When you're working on a job, whether or not the job succeeds, you want to make sure that you do develop qualities like patience and truthfulness determination, dedication. Because sometimes the success of the job may depend on factors that are totally outside of your control. But patience is something you can develop. Dedication is something you can develop. Regardless of outside circumstances. So remember, as you meditate, it's not just a matter of applying yourself to the technique or just following the technique. You really have to apply yourself fully. You have to give your whole heart to this. And as you give your whole heart, your heart gains wholeness. When you give questions of the heart top priority, the heart does become excellent. So as you look at your life and ask, what do I want to accomplish with this life? You don't know how many years you have left, but you do know you have right now. 
and then the next right now and the next right now. So as long as the right nows are coming, use them as an opportunity to develop these qualities. Because these qualities are what make human life worthwhile.